Okay, hi there, hi. So yeah, this is actually a whole family of synthesizers called the ATX range. It's an expandable at Megatron synthesizer uh, based around the original at Megatron from a few years ago, but now vastly more powerful and multi-timbral uh, and expandable. Uh, and with Euro rack connectivity as well. So I'll, I'll start off by sort of taking you through the, the products in the range. Um, the, 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 the ecosystem basically consists of one controller unit and up to eight synthesizers and uh, uh, up to eight effects modules. And the effects modules uh, in, this, in, the, in case of the app Multitron are like the filters and the mixer and the joystick. But you've also got, uh, in the app Multitron, you've got all eight synthesizers uh, already inbuilt into it. Uh, now these synthesizers can be loaded with different uh, firmwares so you can actually uh, assign the synths to work in many many different ways. Uh, so I'll show you what I've set up already on here. So if I pick synths 1, 2 and 3, they're loaded up with the original app Megatron software but chained together as a polysynth. And you can hear a couple of things that bring move it on from the original app Megatron. You've got some DSP effects on there. They're programmable and uploadable off SD card. And you've also got the analog filters. Um, so they, they really can change the sound and put it in many different ways. The filters are multi-mode, two low pass, two uh, high pass and four band pass options. Uh, each filter has its own LFO and envelope as well. Um, so you, you can do a lot of stuff with that. And then when it goes through to the mixer, the mixer is uh, eight VCAs. Again, each with its own LFO and uh, envelope. Let's bit of the LFO there for you. Um, and uh, with a switching matrix to switch between a Q bus and a mix bus and the ability to switch in uh, the DSP effects and also to do sort of wide panning effects where one synth will go left and another will go right to give you that really wide sound. Uh, so that was just synths one, two and three there. Now if I jump to five and six, they're two string machines that have been chained together. Each string machine is four voice, uh, so we've chained them to become an eight voice. Uh, and that you can hear there, I'll tell you in a second. Again, the filter really adds something. And that little bit you heard there is actually um, synth seven, which is set up to be the analog modeling um, synth, uh, the Auditron. And that was working as a split keyboard there. Uh, and that was the analog modeling. Again, all these synth engines are 8-bit, but uh, they, they all do different 8-bit things. It's some are more chip tuny, but as you can hear, you've got string machines and things. Uh, and with the filters added, you can really go for anywhere from very glitchy to very smooth, sweepy pads like that. Uh, final one is the drums here. Numerous things you can do to that, based around the Aussie drum and the at Mega Drum, drum, um, at Mega drum software, uh, and they're sequenceable and uh, things. And then quickly we've got the, the the sequencer here, which is the other side to this controller, um, which you can load MIDI clips live off a, a micro SD card, assign them to any of those synth engines, uh, and with an Ableton style interface that allows you to have a Q bank where you load the clips in and then when you hit play, it will lock them on the beat uh, and allow you to sort of do a live jamming style sequence. It's not a traditional sequence where you're just creating stuff linearly. It's about loading clip, little clips in and, and uh, MIDI clips and assigning them to different synth engines on the fly. And then tweaking that information, there'll be processes to reverse and invert and you know, double speed, half speed them to try and... Uh, I, I got it. One I, the original plan for this, and I'm um, hoping that will come eventually, was this sequencer, was that you could have one MIDI clip, and with enough processes on that MIDI clip, you could actually build an entire track 
by, you know, um, the bass line could be half speed of that clip and every other note removed. And then you could assign double speed, but put it on the drum part and it would be flying hi-hats or something. <laughs> and that was the start of the whole machine then? You started based around this MIDI idea of one track? Yeah, certainly the sequencer side of it. It was two things. It was the, the programmability of it, because I knew people didn't like lo loading the program, uh, the software via cables and computers. They wanted it all to just happen internally, which it now does. So that was the synth side. And the sequence side was this crazy idea that you could just have MIDI clips and use that data from the MIDI clip to create interesting creative ideas um, so uh, yes that's that's kind of the app Multitron but there's other products in the range that are all compatible the thing that separates this from other synthesizers is the is the kind of the 8-bit source going into an analog filter that's the key kind of like source of the sound is that is that right yeah yeah I mean uh, yes basically it's it's a fairly unusual uh, uh, sounds path now uh, especially with things like the uh, the ma then it going on to the matrix switcher that allows you to switch in and out of a headphone queue bus so that you can have a, a, a sound being queued just in the headphones which yeah. you can then switch live uh, and then mixing that with the filters and the the various firmwares so it's, it's it's a pretty unusual sound path yeah right. yeah right. Okay. Right. On to the next one. okay so the Megatron 2 these are all sort of based all part of the same family. This contains one controller and just two synth engines. No filters, no uh, VCAs, no effects. Uh, and if I play the actual raw output of the synth there. You can hear that's just the synth output direct. Now, this, this, the key thing about this system is it's expandable. And what I, you can do is you can take your bass synth and then expand it through modules the, uh, in Eurorack form, and it's got high integration with Eurorack kit as well. So what I've done here is I've taken the Dirt for Multicore out of the synth into the I/O expander here, and then the other thing you need is the ATX data cable, which is what makes it uh, integrates it with the synth. It's not just a standalone module; it's it's actually fully integrated. And I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Um, so I, I'm now going through the filters module and the VCA and effects module. And you can hear that's now being filtered and we've got the VCA on it there as well, doing a little envelope. Um, now the key thing about this is that I can control both of these modules from my controller here. There's a data link as well as the audio. And if I, uh, you can see I'm doing the cutoff there. And vice versa, if I turn this knob for cutoff on here, it updates there so there's a two-way data link between all your expansions right. and this is just the sort of start the other thing you can do which is on this end of the unit if you don't want to go down desktop or keyboard routes at all you want to keep it all in the Eurorack form you can buy just a controller on its own and then build up up to eight synths and the effects modules and almost create your own synthesizer because these won't be these are just the initial launch modules uh, building blocks of this Like the plan will be that there will be more external effects modules that can be chained in and expanded to. This is like just the start. <laughs> 